the Butt Kicker Gamer 2. What you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker. The future is feeling. Ever witness someone so fast on track you doubt you could ever be on their level? The mission of Advanced Motorsports is to demonstrate that speed is achievable for everyone. With the expertise of some of the best sim drivers in North America, we are set to release free content on social media and comprehensive guides on our website. For those seeking the ultimate experience, our Advanced Motorsport Institute and personalized coaching sessions are the way to go. No matter your level of experience, we invite you to follow us on our social media to learn to be fast, fast. My sweet beloved Auto Club Speedway, it's no more in the real world, but it is certainly memorialized in iRacing. And we're going to it in the Precision Racing League Cup Series Season 1 2024. Excited to bring the action here on Race Spot TV. My name is Dylan Coyle, joined alongside Derek Watson. Well, we're almost halfway through, even though there's no real halfway race. Uh, in the PRL Cup Series season, but we'll get to 45% of the way through if we really want to crunch the numbers after we see the checkered flag here, and I'm excited. Let's take a look at the schedule. Atlanta, Rockingham, Darlington, Auto Club. I mean, three of those circuits in the first four races, if you want to include Atlanta 1 in that, uh, are not even in use anymore. They're not the correct configurations, the modern day configurations. And I mean, when you look at Iowa, then Long Beach, Long Beach is going to be a wild card race. Uh, and I, I'm certainly laughing at the fact that it's uh, the, the day is Super Bowl Sunday. But uh, Derek, I'll let you talk about that. Yeah, it's the day of a big game, so I guess we'll <laughs> wait and see who shows up and uh, who doesn't. But, you know, what I'm excited for that race for, Dylan, the PRL, PRL admins, pardon me, have always said there would never be a caution on a road course in, in NASCAR races unless it's a full track blockage. 
I'm willing to bet. <laughs> willing to bet that's the most likely track we've ever done in the Cup Series to achieve that goal. Yeah, it's probably going to uh, happen at least once, I'd say, around that final corner at Long Beach. But, uh, hey, schedule, all good standings. It's starting to become a little bit of a bloodbath three races in. It's still doable for guys like Joshua Daniels or Trent Dinkle. Uh, heck, even James O'Brien, Chris Hudson, Pat Harvey, Jose Acosta, or Luke Christian to make up the gap that they're all currently chasing to Abner Acosta, who is currently 23 points up on second place, second and I guess tied for second uh, with Daniels and Dinkle. Just three races in. That's immeasurable. Two wins in the first two races, did not win the third one, but I digress. Uh, and of course, the team standings are going to be interesting as well with private label team hype having that big advantage when you've got three of the top four in the driver's standings racing for private label team hype. I don't think any of us are surprised, Derek. No, not surprised at all. Pioneer is putting up a good fight, as is Love Racing. Love and Pioneer only six points apart. But remember, Dylan, with no drop weeks this season, that's the, one of the new things about the nine-week PRL season. If Abner has one off week, if Private Label has one off week, there's no safety net here. There's nowhere to save them, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. So it's still possible for those guys to be caught. Yeah, absolutely. But let's take a moment to talk about who makes it happen for the Precision Racing League on Race Spot TV. And we start with Advanced Sim Racing. Owned and operated by passionate sim racers, advanced sim racing designs and builds the sturdiest and most durable aluminum profile racing simulation cockpits available in the market today. All PRL members also get a 5% discount on ASR products using the Precision 5 coupon code. Racebox Sim Racing. Racebox offers mid and high end button boxes for sim racing enthusiasts from the casual gamer up to the most meticulous sim racing driver competitively priced and carefully handcrafted or button boxes are an enjoyable addition to any sim racing setup. Visit raceboxsimracing.com and get a 5% discount using the precision five coupon code. The buck kicker buck kicker products and incredible immersion and realism to every game. Feel every nuance and truly put yourself in the driver's seat. Maradness. Maradness is a performance lifestyle brand motivated by motorsport and founded by professional race car driver Daniel Morad, who had a lot of success in the 24 hours of Daytona. Mr. Hedge iRacing Photography. Capture your finest, proudest, or simply worst moments from your hobby in up to 8K resolution. A great addition to any sim room. And finally, Advanced Motorsports. Get ready to learn to be fast. Fast with Advanced Motorsports. Follow them on their socials to become a better driver. You know, we talk a little bit, Derek, about, you know, Moradness and Daniel Morad. I'm not sure if you watch the 24 Hours of Daytona at all, but... He, his team was fast and deserved that uh, perfect uh, result for them um, in their GTD class. But I'm not sure. Did you watch yeah, much? I did. You know, it's sort of ironic that we're racing an auto club today because the mileage of a real life day 24 in the in the fast class Dylan says that if you were to take those miles driven in the past 24 hours, you could literally go from Daytona to California and the amount of miles that the fastest class drove. So it's sort of ironic that you find the PRL Cup here the next night at Auto Club Speedway. But now we're watching Maverick Davis here. Maverick turns at 39.617 in his first lap. That puts him up on the board, not where he, not where he wants to be. So right now, Jose Acosta, by the way, the other Acosta brother, is up on the top of the boards, Dylan. Yeah, Jose Acosta has run a very solid lap time right here, but pretty much all these lap times are pretty close together. You're looking at the uh, intervals between each position. So six hundredths between Jose Acosta and Trent Dinkle, and then 12 thousandths between Acosta uh, and, well, uh, Acosta and Dinkle. And then Maverick Davis puts it up with a uh, 59 thousands behind Acosta and uh, 
This is some that's good. Quite the paint. Yeah, that's that's some good pace right there. I said that's quite the paint. There was an anime character and a skull and bones and all kinds of stuff there on that car. Paint pace. It's all yeah. They they sound the same, right? Here's Corey Cook, one of the newcomers this season. Yeah, Corey Cook in that 61 Chevy Camaro ZL1. He's trying to keep it in the throttle. You heard that little bit of a uh, throttle up mid-corner. Took off the, the foot off the throttle just momentarily. I wonder if that's going to hurt Cook's lap time uh, as that Camaro ZL1 comes around three and four. You have to say probably he was, Corey was hoping not to cook the tires there. Nope. Mm -mm. Bye. Huh? Yep. Yep, let's cut away because that was uh, dangerous from you, Derek. <laughs> Not because the checkered flag came out to end qualifying here. <laughs> I appreciate the timing there. All right, let's go through the starting grid for tonight's PRL Cup Series race from Auto Club Speedway. Jose Acosta, about 42, backwards 24 flames. I wonder where the inspiration came for that one. Jose Acosta starting on the pole with Maverick Davis starting alongside Trent Dinkle and Abner Acosta, a row two private label team hype lockout with Chris Hudson running at the top five. He'll start alongside Joshua Daniels in P6. Jeff Chandler in seventh, while Pat Harvey will start in eighth. Brandon Fetter placed the inside of row five with James O'Brien rounding out the top 10. Bruno Mello, Lou Christian are in row six, while in row seven in 13th place, Tristan Callahan will start on the inside of Jose Medina in that number 24 car. Brian Dixon and Chad Kibbe, while Vincent Sepulveda and Tommy Brandon round out row nine. Eric Oliva, Devin Maines, Luis Rodriguez, Corey Cook, Walter Walden, Ben Laughter, of course. Uh, Maines was the last one to actually set a time. We were watching with Cook, and uh, Corey was unable to set a time uh, in his vehicle. But that's your starting grid. This race is uh, going to be fun, of course. Uh, it'll last, whether it goes to the lap counter or just stays uh, with that 90-minute limit that we are all familiar with in PRO Cup Series action. Usually, though, we, we don't hit that timer in Cup, which I do like. Yeah, this series, knock on wood, has a history of producing some good, solid racing. And this is really a track that, while it's not used in real life anymore, Dylan, has all the potential to do everything you could want here. Nice, wide track, multi-groove racing, you know, uh, kind of flat out racing, a little bit of draft. There's not much, unless you're a short track kind of guy, Dylan, there's not much you can really hope for that you don't get here. Now, of course, the irony is that, you know, this likely is becoming a short track uh, at Auto Club in the next couple of years. And the pictures of the demolishment of this track have already surfaced. You can be seen, I think, even on like Google Earth now, I believe, has it's, it's been updated, you know, or Google Streets or whatever has been updated. You can see it here, but. What a great lineup of the top 10 tonight, Dylan. It's having some names that are really starting to grow in this series. Chris Hudson is one of them. Pat Harvey is another one. Both of those guys up in the top 10. Drivers who maybe battled for a top 15 last season are really finding their way this year. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, there's very few tracks that I feel like you can have a surprise winner. Um, but I feel like Auto Club, if you stay with the lead pack, you're going to have a really good shot of being there at the end of the race, potentially uh, competing for that race win. Just one word I want to hear from you, Derek. What will the start of this race be? Chaos. Ah, that was a low-hanging fruit, but I'll accept it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Will they fan out to five wide coming into turn one next time? By we'll see. The iRacing pace car peels off and heads into pit road. Barney the Flagman holds up the green, waves it. We're underway here at Auto Club Speedway. All 
already you see Jose Acosta taking that inside line. It's not going to get the momentum out of turn two down the backstretch. Maverick Davis closing in. The thousands starting to turn into much lower numbers than they just were. But watch on board. Look to throttle up. This is a very defensive line to take by Jose Acosta at the very beginning of this race. I think as it goes on, we're going to start to see that high wreck, line. Wreck, There's a wreck, wreck in the back. Oh, big mess. The 31 around. Yellow is out. And we are back under caution. I think a lot of solid cars are involved. Goodness me. What was that word? Chaos? Yeah, oh. you got it. So we're hearing uh, Rodriguez, Chandler Hudson, few drivers, uh, Jose Medina, Chandler, all of them getting uh, meatballs, which if you're new to iRacing means you've got a big problem, come to pit road and we got to fix it before you're allowed to get back out on track. You could try and run with the meatball flag, but you get penalized and you wouldn't be fast any anyway. So not even done one lap around this two mile D-shaped oval and we're already under caution. Wonder how that started. Yeah, I think we're gonna see a product of three wide racing go bad here. Watch this, you see this, this car, three cars in behind and it's gonna come, that car's gonna, the bottom's gonna come up. That's Jeff Chandler comes up and it's kind of rubs up and it never, I, I guess, thought he had more space, but at a certain point, yes, Auto Club is wide, but not that wide. See Pat Harvey dig under there. That's Tristan Callahan on the bottom, I believe, gets under there, and a few others, but... Yep, three, almost four wide racing there in the first half. There's Chad Kibbe barely he can buy, Dylan. Yeah, that is a very close escape for Kibbe. Look at that! Oh, there's a little bit of damage for the seven right there. As, uh, I think that's where Rodriguez got the, the meatball, which is so close to that car just getting out of it or maybe Rodriguez didn't have a meatball because he's still out on track might have just been a scrape nonetheless uh, involved in that whole mess a lot of cars and the biggest one the biggest news from that whole group is Joshua Daniels uh, he's been in pit road for a very long time Joshua Daniels came in tied for second place in the PRL Cup Series standings and uh, unfortunately for him He's going to have to hope that that car can get repaired as much as it possibly can. But he's been in his pit stall for 45 seconds at this point. Uh, man, I'm sure just waiting until this pace car comes around. It's That means to me that there's a lot of laps and a lot of time he's got to get repaired on that uh, car. And not to sound macabre about it, but what he probably really has to hope for at this point, more so than getting his car fixed, he needs to really hope for some bad luck in, in some of those things to happen. To the other top, you know, Abner Acosta, Jose Acosta, Trent Dinkle, and the others who were up in the points. Because with this no drop week system that we talked about earlier, as I said, it's like it's like doing trapeze work with no safety net. It, it's, you know, it, it's just dangerous. And so right now, he really almost needs to hope for bad things with the others as much as positive for himself in that moment here. Now, the one thing that stood out to me about this restart, though, Dylan, is we're about to try it again here. Maverick Davis was all over Jose Acosta. Mm-hmm. And now he gets to start on the outside, but I don't know, man. I, I, you know, as a driver, I've always had this opinion. We talked about a lot of things in iRacing. You talk about setups. You talk about pit road entrance. You talk about keeping your speed on pit road. You talk about three wide racing at a super speedway. But the hardest thing in iRacing by far, Dylan, in my opinion, is starting P2 on the outside and timing it correctly. Yeah, I would agree with you there. It's so difficult. Uh, you've got to kind of look to your left. You don't steer with, you know, the wheel first, right? Like, I, if you watched any onboard footage where it kind of didn't go from the, the hood of the car outwards but looked into uh, that the driver's, pers not perspective, but you saw the driver's hands. You saw their eyes and them looking and everything like that. And if you watched them at the 24 hours, you would have seen, you know, they look before they turn. And that's massive. That, that's, a, that's what you kind of have to do. You can't really be looking at the left and drive straight, right? No, so no, it's, your, your hands follow your eyes. Yeah, 100%. 
Uh, but as we see, the pace car is going off. Jose Acosta, Maverick Davis, that front row again, restart here. And that's a really solid restart for Maverick Davis, although it'll go single file with Jose Acosta uh, coming in front of him. I think this is going to be a really solid run down the backstretch if Davis is able to time this right. Jose Acosta had so much room on the outside, he just didn't take it. That's going to be a much slower apex. Yeah, the trade-off here that we talk about a lot of times on Auto Club, though, and why you pick the different lines is tire conservation. That top line may be faster. By the way, here comes a pass. There's Maverick Davis now. He wants to have the inside. Yeah, Davis is going to try and use the slide up, but he's not going to have the momentum on corner exit, but he's going to hope to clear him. That's exactly what he does. Swap over. No. Jose Acosta tries to stay up high. He's got to run. They're going to be side by side. He gets a little bit of a push from Hey, guess who else? Brother Abner Acosta, who pushes him into the corner. Now that second groove is being straddled. That crack by Maverick Davis. It's going to be advantage 42 down the back stretch off of two. There we are, side by side. Now, I was saying a second ago, it's about the lines you're taking about the tire conservation, right? Because that top line is a little faster, especially out of a corner, Dylan, but it's going to eat up those tires. Like that that bumpy surface, the gravel, the rocks, what have you. Being down at the bottom, typically saves more tires, so you'll see drivers try to take advantage of both. Here's Abner Acosta, by the way, brother of Jose running back in P3. So I guess right now we have a Maverick Davis sandwich. A Maverick Davis sandwich, we love that. Uh, I think Davis would like to uh, not be the, uh, the meat in the middle <laughs> and try and move into P1 gaining out of turn two, but so is Abner. We ride on board with Brandon Fetter Place, and that's always a scary sight to see, by the way. It's it's who's on the left, the inside of Fetter Place, and uh, it's Trent Dinkle who is being passed by Fetter Place right now, and this is a very common tactic that we see from Trent early in races. He'll just kind of sandbag a little bit, let the everybody else push hard and have the tires kind of fall off and he moves on from there as we exit turn two on lap eight of 105 it's a 210 mile race that's the scheduled distance 96 degrees on track temperature in fahrenheit 65 degrees ambient it's set for april 1st so it is fairly cool uh at least ambient, maybe not track-wise. It's pretty average, I'd say, for how hot you would expect a, a racetrack to be. Derek, I, I always will laugh about this till the day I'm gone from this earth, the last ever race weekend that we had at Fontana uh, in NASCAR competition. Um, the Xfinity Series race had to be pushed to after the Cup Series race. The last race ever at Fontana was Xfinity, not Cup because Xfinity went to the night as oh, Kimmy's around. Gonna slide up, hit the wall, caution's out. And, oh, they're still oh, wrecking. No. That's a massive hit for Medina, the 24. Oh, man. man. That looked way after the fact. I'm curious what happened to Medina. If maybe he just tried to check up and avoid something, or if he just got in the grass trying to avoid it. But man, that was brutal. Looked like well after the wreck here. Well, that's caution number two, Dylan, so now, you have to think now that the questions begin to lurk in your head about the what ifs and scenarios and the strategies. I don't know. Here's a replay here of uh, Jose Medina coming late onto the scene. You see the smoke up ahead. Kimmy saved that. Oh, Medina just lost it. Oh, that's an embarrassing moment. Yeah, I got down there off the banking and on the, below the white line and slammed, he slammed the brakes too hard. He's got the rear end around and this sort of but went into the grass lost. well the grass didn't help anything but i i, I think the <laughs> slamming of the brakes down below the white line probably is what put us i think that's what pushed him into the grass uh, right yeah like yeah, we'll watch kibby i there's a car there you know and wow that is the uh, luckiest kiss to the wall you could possibly have and yeah you go below the apron that makes you unbalanced but when you tr try to to apply the brakes uh, on the grass with your left sides dipping into the grass your right sides will grip uh the asphalt more than your lefts so all of a sudden it creates this kind of turning effect where your your, your right sides are being caught uh more than your left 
and it kind of spins you to the right. That's that's kind of exactly what happened right there to, to Medina. But we see a lot of drivers in the pits, and I like this move. Uh, they can probably go 45 laps on a green flag run with fuel. Um, so you couldn't go completely the rest of the way. It's not a bad move if there's more cautions. I mean, you're probably going to pit more, but... You know, this 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 might get you right there if it went green the rest of the way. You could maybe save and go in one stop from, from this point on. Yeah, and that's what I said a second ago when the yellow came out, Dylan, about right now the, the driver's thoughts are scrambling. We're taking a look at Tristan Callahan here because this is a series, as we said, that's not known for a lot of yellows. It's known for some pretty clean green flag racing. So when a moment like this comes up, now you start to play all those scenarios in your head. Well, what if this is what if this one of those races? What if we have a bunch of yellows? What if we, you know, can't keep it green? Do is track position more important than pitting? You know, is fuel mileage a problem? Is this a problem? You know, and you start to really overthink it at times because you just don't know what that outcome is going to be here. So that's what's going through everyone's minds, and I think especially for the top cars though what the really the big decision is is track position right now seems to be king and i think these guys are going to try to push it as long as they can yeah they're they're going to try and push it and uh, hey listen if you have you always have to create strategy based off a green flag run right you can't say oh well there could be a caution here so let's plan for the caution you don't do that unless you've got to take a gamble as the lights go off on the iRacing pace car. The only ra reason you do that is because it's, it's you know, you're in a situation where you're you're not going to win anyway. you got to throw the dice, roll it, and hope something good happens from it. Um, you always got to go as if it's going to go green the rest of the way. So it's a solid move to uh, come down to the pits for some drivers and kind of see what happens from there. Yeah, that's, you know, that's the question. It's part of why some of us love the racing. And listen, that's part of the, 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 the different aspects of being a fan, right? Some people love the horsepower and the sound and the vibrations and the feelings. Some people love the door-to-door -door racing and, the, and, you know, and unfortunately some love the carnage. But some of us, we love the mental game. We love the, the, the game of chess that's being played with the decisions. And th there is nothing harder, even in sim. I don't know if you've ever taken time, Dylan, to be a crew chief or a spotter for a friend in sim. There is nothing harder than making a, a decision for a, for a car that you're not driving that you know you're responsible for. It's it's kind of a helpless feeling, you know, um, if you're trying to almost drive the car. You can't drive the car for them, right? You, you got to let them. You got the wheels in their hands. They got to move from there. And it's, it's kind of just trusting that they've got what it takes, and we'll see if these drivers have what it takes here on this restart. A little offline for Maverick Davis. He, I think he almost just slid the tires, did not get going very well through the restart zone, and now Abner Acosta will be down the inside of him looking to move 1-2 for the Acosta brothers through turns 1 and 2. You know, I don't think is happening what i thought to myself was listen in maverick's mind he's got to be thinking if we're going to keep doing this if we're going to keep restarting and going green and doing all this stuff i'd i'd want to be in third place i'd fall back to third place and run it around and if we get lucky maybe i can make a move happen from the inside on line two versus the outside of line one but here's an onboard with trent dinkle you know we talk about this track dylan we talk about how it's a legacy track and how it has so much character look at that bumpiness on the in-car camera Look at how crazy this track is, isn't it? It's just that's like it's just like having like a like a massage seat on Max Force the whole time. Yeah, the buck kicker uh, that can provide that action. As you see that big bump down the back stretch, what a perfect look at that with Trent Dinkle. We see him on board. I think he uh, he wasn't wearing his typical. Where? Wait, I, I missed it? Yeah, you missed it. And I I called him out on it. And I uh, gotta go back and watch the replay. <laughs> no, I gotta, I gotta do. find this. You do. Look at this close in battle from Davis and Jose Acosta. Abner pushes Jose into the corner. It shows him a little bit too deep. But Maverick Davis, uh, 
And Jose Acosta, you could barely put a bit of card stock in between them before they would have hit as, ooh, Jose Acosta almost hit that outside wall in the exit. Had to almost swing the wheel all the way down to the left to keep the car stable. And for now, he holds the lead, but this is going to be a big run for Maverick here. Look at this all behind me. You know, I talked to just a couple of the drivers earlier before the race, Dylan. They told me this is likely to be a draft fest. This is likely to be a race that has a lot of drafting. And, you know, I thought, like you did, I thought Jose was avoiding hitting the wall off of two last time. Now I think Jose is kind of playing that game of snaking and breaking the draft. Snaking and breaking. I'm a poet, and I didn't even know it. Well... I, uh, we hear, we have voices in our heads from our, uh, <laughs> they talk to me, they count to Our me. race control and producer cool. sometimes. And they yeah, it's funny, I, I know you didn't make a Randy Orton shout out on purpose, but that's a, that's a good Randy Orton shout out. Mm, the night after okay, the Royal okay. Rumble. There you All go. right, fair enough, fair enough. I know, uh, you know what, it was Royal Rumble the other day, but this is a Royal Rumble in auto club in racing form, auto racing form drivers it feels like every single time uh, one of them gets out in front of the pack there's another one that kind of joins them Brian Dixon about to make his presence known just without some intro music except the uh, loud drowning out noises of uh, these Cup Series race cars he throws it in to that corner and he gets the move made but he's gonna have to really slow it down on the exit that's gonna open the door up for Fetter Place and Davis but Better place kind of slowed up. Great move from Brian Dixon there. Leads lap 17. Great move by a couple of drivers who've not seen up front much this season. Now getting their chance to shine here in the moment. Better place Dixon. Going to make a run at it here. It's sort of surprising to see these guys up front, to be if I'm honest with you. I, I, they sort of came out of nowhere. We Weren't we just talking about, about Jose Acosta like breaking the draft and holding one up? And there you go. Yeah, and uh, it's kind of what happens, right? And by the way, let's look at Trent Dickel. He's in uh, P7 right now with Abner Acosta. You think this is planned? No. No. Trent never plans to be anywhere but the front. I don't think it's planned at all. I think well, I, it's, uh, it's, it's, the, it's the tire saving. That's the thing, though. No. Trent usually throws. He, he'll do this a bit. He'll pour it on um, later in a run. You think about it. We went back to green flag racing around seven or eight laps ago. And you can go. He didn't go into the pits that at that point. So his run's probably going to take him to close to lap 50 with the caution so far. Uh, so, hey, maybe he's just saving till, till he gets to lap 50, and then he'll start to throw it on maybe around lap, I don't know, 30, I guarantee 35. you, if we get to talk to Trent Dinkle at the end of this race, if he's on the podium, I gear, I, I'll bet you a six-piece bonus swing above Buffalo Wings that he does not have a strategy to lay in the back. He wants to be up front. All day, every day. Can't Is that, All right. Copy. Uh, <laughs> Trent Dickel, we usually talk to him at the end of a broadcast uh, for finishing in the top three. And I'll ask if he was saving some tires early in the race, and we'll see what he says. <laughs> All right. We'll see. Uh, Trent's one of those guys. That's a, con that's a, that's a, that's a written contract. contract right there. An oral verbal. contract, actually. It's, it's no a verbal. Body, All right. Listen. It's a verbal. It's a verbal. Let me. Gentleman's yeah, agreement right there. Let's talk about the front of the field for a second, though. And, and Brian Dixon and Brandon Fetter place, you know, both these drivers are obviously amazing drivers and, and done well. But sometimes when we come to a league like PRL Cup and you've not had a lot of laps led in a season or in a long time, when you get up here and you're leading this race, one of two things can happen. Either that confidence sets in very fast. Oh, my. And you feel very at peace or relaxed, which uh, that was not... That Trent back there, that's one wide night. Wow. Anyways, so I was gonna say you can feel very confident, Dylan. You can feel like you, this this is mine, you know, I belong here. Or in fact, sometimes leading the race can be almost the most nervous and anxious thing you can do if you're not used to it, because you're so on edge, you're so excited, you're so amped up, you're so oh my god, I can't believe I'm here. Mm -hmm. That it becomes more difficult than being in the middle of the pack of the race because it just it oh that that emotion and anxiety will overwhelm you. Yeah, you're absolutely right there. I feel like, you know, it's different positions are where other drivers, you know, can excel, right? Some drivers thrive from being in first and having to deal with the pressure of leading the entire field. Some drivers thrive when they're just 
kind of stalking the drivers in front. I feel like more often than not, drivers would say that they feel more comfortable when they're they're catching up to a driver, and then they start to see them maybe making a few more mistakes. It gives you a ton of confidence that you can get a move done. But once you're at him first, there's no kind of uh, there's no tells, there's no breaking points, there, except for the ones that are stationary across the track uh, to help you kind of you know, not shadow drive or anything like that. It, it becomes a little bit more difficult uh, to get, you know, just good lap times unless you know the track, you know your car, you know your setup, and you're in the zone. So, it, Brian Dixon, it, he's been leading the last six or seven laps. I think he's in the zone right now. Yeah, and the other thing that happens sometimes too with drivers is you start driving out of the long window, Dylan. Like, instead of driving out the windshield, you almost begin mirror driving. You begin watching the guy behind you. What is he doing? Why is he doing that? You know, what does he know that I don't know? And you overthink that a little bit. And then, and then you overthink it a lot is what happens. And so, it appears like Brian has it under control. Brian's doing really well here, leading around Better Place and Davis around the Acostas and others. But a great run here is going on. We're now up to lap 24. He seems calm. Seems very calm right now in that 03 machine. Fetter Place, I mean, you can see the the thousands that he gains on corner exit, probably around 30 thousandths, three hundredths gain through there. But at that same time, that, that same point, you know, it's so important uh, that you remember the draft, right? That, that has a huge effect on the runs that these drivers, these cars get. Um, and there's a really good look at the the, no, the new Toyota kind of nose, that new model uh, for the Camry, and uh, that is new for iRacing, right? The, yeah, the Fords and the Toyotas look a little bit different in the Cup Series this year in the NASCAR and NASCAR's real-world competitions, and uh, iRacing is reflected in here, Derek. Causing nightmare for every iRacing painter known to man, whether oh, it be... Goodness. Any, any of them, whether it be Splash and Go or any of your local friends or maybe yourself to paint or anyone. Because sometimes we get notices from iRacing, hey, this is going to change with the update. And then sometimes it just changes and we have to adapt to it. So there's plenty, <laughs> there's plenty of broken paints out there on trading paints right now that don't fit the new template. But uh, yeah, this, is, this has been the week of updating your templates and getting things fixed and ready for the 2024 season. Good thing I... I drive the Chevy Camaro ZL1. <laughs> I don't want to go through the paint booth again. Uh, Photoshop is my paint booth. Listen, uh, last time booths. he had crayons. He was eating them. Uh, yeah, yeah. Rose art. Rose art, of course. It grows in you sometimes, too. <laughs> Not Crayola. Crayola is a Philadelphia company. Or a Pennsylvania company. Not Philadelphia. Anyway, better place. Still chasing Brian Dixon. I don't know if this is as much chasing or just keeping it easy, right? You can't win a race on lap 27, 28 of 105, but you can certainly lose it. Not a bad idea to just stay in the draft and keep that momentum going. There's still a long way to go before we go into a green flag pit cycle for the leaders right here. And, and more importantly, the, the fact that probably Fredder Place may already be thinking about is, you know, you brought up this whole idea under the last yellow about fuel mileage. Who can make it on one stop, can't make it on one stop. Better Place is burning a lot less fuel than the car in front. Hold on, let's watch this 14 here. So it comes down the back straight here into turn three. All looks good. Oh, he's, stra he's straddling that, uh, that crack a little oh. bit. Oh, he got, he got spooked. A I don't know if there was a... I don't know if he got spooked. I think it's a hockey thing. Recognize a body check and see one. <laughs> I didn't. I, I thought there was a little bit of separation there um, from that angle, or a bit of neck code involved. It didn't look like they hit visually, but it seemed like the reaction was because it was a bit of a bit of a body check, right? I, I don't. I don't 100 percent know. Um, nonetheless, uh, that is uh, that is not a, a comfortable feeling when you smack the right side um, of your car against any wall. So uh, we'll, we'll move on and keep going. I want to take a yeah. moment to talk about, I'm sorry, Derek. No, go ahead. 
I wanted to say uh, Tommy Brandon. Um, a quick shout out to uh, Brandon in that number 11 machine. He's the uh, best car position wise to strategy at this current point in time. The only car in the top 10 that came into pit road during that last pit stop, meaning that he has 11 lap fresher tires and 11 more laps of fuel in his Cup Series car. And that's gonna help him as we continue to move on through this race if it stays green. So all those points are valid. It is gonna help him, the 11 laps of fuel and tires will help him. Not the bust, the bubble, or the strategy, but Tommy Brandon came down because he took the blame for that wreck that involved Chad Kibbe and uh, Rodriguez and others. And so by taking the blame for the wreck, he, he had an end of line penalty. So he came down pit road partially to help serve that penalty. So yes, he's in a great spot. I'm not gonna deny that. Strategy, eh, he, he, he's down there because he felt the need uh, because of that penalty. Fair enough, fair enough, but still came to get time, right? I'm not. Oh yeah, by the way, we have a lead change here, do we? Yeah, we do. Brandon Fetterplace has moved into the lead of this race as uh, he's made the move this lap, pass lap on Brian Dixon. Jose Acosta back into fighting for third. Maverick Davis running that outside wall. He's the highest up there right now. And it, it does work. The strategy does work. The car does feel a little bit more snug up against the wall, but it, you kind of have to counteract that with how much you lose just in terms of actual mileage on the top of the track as opposed to the bottom of the track. Look at how wide this is. You can probably land a Boeing 737 uh, down here, just not a max, you know? Well, not, not, not 737 maxes. Yeah, maybe not a max. Uh, I mean, this is wide. We've seen all kinds of beautiful racing here, you know, on, at Auto Couple with years three and four wide racing has happened time and time again, but you know, I think what's happening with Maverick Davis on running that top line, there's Trent Dinkle making it work though, is it can't be just one person against five. If you're gonna run that top lane and be successful, like right now you see Dinkle and I think Abner and Costa up there making it work, they're doing it together. And that little bit of draft and momentum helps you build. No matter how great a line is, I'll be the line of six drivers going the wrong lane and using the momentum in the draft versus being the right lane by myself. That is a, a curious case of just what feels more comfortable in the draft and, and having to deal with dirty air. Uh, here at a track like, like this, as you see, there's a bit of an accordion up on that top line. As, uh, by the way, I, I'm just saying, look who's in fourth. Uh, that would be Trent Dinkle, who's moving up. From the I said lap 30. I said lap 30. He'd start to push it big time. I mean, you did. I'll give you credit. You did. <laughs> you said it. We're, I hate oh, that pump draft. Look at this from this angle here. Look, he's all, I mean, and they're teammates. So I'm sure Abner yeah. knows. They're in Discord together. They're talking. Uh, but, man, those are some bumps right there. So the back of Abner Costa. And you feel it when you're going around these corners here at Auto Club. The cracks the scenes in this track, in the corners. It's uncomfortable as Abner's gonna just kind of deal with Trent being on the inside. I think Abner's not gonna fight too hard. I lied, he'll, he'll fight a little bit <laughs> on the outside. I think mostly because Jose Acosta is also on the outside. It's weird, right? Jose is kind of like that. He's not on private label team hype, but it, it's, and we always call, right? It's called a sister team, but here it's more like a brother team. Are we going four wide through corners? One and two almost. Trent Tinkle throwing it down the inside of three. Is he going to make up two positions? Comes up and clears Brian Dixon, who has definitely used up his stuff a little bit. And now Fetter Place has to deal with the private label team hype duo of Abner Acosta and Trent Tinkle in second and third. Yeah, there they all come together and now we're gonna make try to make it work here. Look how close Acosta and Dinko get. And man, they just get so close to one another at this track. And just think of how wide it is. Two, three, four wide racing. One of the comments was made tonight, I'm pretty sure it was Luke Christian who told me that triple monitors are such a benefit here. You know, there's always that classic iRacing debate dealing with you do single monitor, triple monitor, or VR. 
And Luda said, listen, this is one of the tracks with how wide it is and how wide we race. That triples really gives you that advantage of knowing when someone's on your inside or outside. He said he was happy to have them. That's a really good point, actually. The wider the track is, I'm sure triples help so much more as we ride on board. Uh, that is uh, a look at what triple monitors look like. Bruto Mello running just outside the top 10. Um, he's got that dashboard in front. He's got a screen to the right. And, of course, triples. So interesting setup there uh, as we're kind of looking out in front of what's going on from James O'Brien's point of view. O'Brien, remember, is also private label team hype. Uh, I'm telling you, they, they they usually chill out in the back and then they start moving forward. I've seen it a lot from them where once the, you know, 60% of the, the stint is through, did Jose Acosta hit the wall up there? On the exit he did he came darn close. They've been very, very close, but now they're all accordioning back up together. Look at that. Six drivers underneath a twin-sized blanket right there. Uh, a twin-sized blanket because they're brothers? I get it. <laughs> More they're not like, twins, though, but yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I like the uh, insinuation there is Abner and Trent. I mean, since when could you lock bumpers? I thought that was disallowed in NASCAR competition. Maybe not so much as we watch with jose did does he hit the wall on the exit of four here Jerry? watch it here it's way up the track and oh yeah oh yeah it's massive that's here's, a here's, massive here's something that happens to a race car driver you saw in the back of that shot and i've done this so many times as a driver you're the guy behind him you're watching him do it you're like you know what i'm not gonna do that i'm not gonna hit the wall and somehow darn it i followed him right in the wall that is a fair point, and uh, it's, it's called shadow driving, right? We're talking oh, about mirror driving. Do, I think. Yeah, mirror driving, right? We're talking about that. You were mentioning that earlier. This is shadow driving, and you know what this is? One, two, three, private label team hype on lap 41 of 105 laps. It's very impressive. The concern, however, remember, we've talked about it. I don't think this race is going to go green the whole way, but if it does, there's no way that private label team hype, unless I'm wildly off with my calculations, which has been true in the past, you can usually go 90 miles uh, on a full tank of fuel with these cup cars. That's 45 laps here. Uh, so with the yellow flags that happened, up it to maybe 50 laps, 50 plus 45, there's still a lot of time that that uh, private label team hype has not accounted for, they can't make it in one stop. So do you have a driver, uh, for example, such as Tommy Brandon or, you know, Waldo Walden, who might be sitting in a better position because they took fuel um, at that last caution and they have 11 laps more fuel they can last another 14 or so laps. It'll get you to around just a one-stop race at that point. So it is curiosity-inducing here, where if it goes green, private label team hype might be caught out. Yeah, they could be caught out. But what I think is interesting is, that, look, they're not concerned for whatever reason. Either they just know they can't make it, or oh, yeah, they don't they do. want to bother trying to make it. Because listen, look how they're racing right now. If you were concerned about making it the one-stop or making it in any further on fuel, You'd be in line, you might be 95% throttle, you know, you'd be kind of calm, you'd be managing your, your steering inputs. Now these guys are full throttle, full bore, you know, it's just going for it. So obviously they're not concerned about this idea. I guess they maybe they believe that the the time that they'll get working together off the of road will help offset anything that you know Tommy Brandon and the others may have if they can pull up that one stop race. Yeah, and I think that's definitely something that'll be key because even with that extra stop that private label team hype would make if it went green the rest of the way, you have to also remember they're getting fresh tires twice more unless they go for a quick, you know, you know, uh, splash and go. Yeah. Um, well, and, it, as, and what's I, interesting about that thought that you're on the right path about was when I talked to Jose Acosta for the race, 
he told me he went out and did some official racing because I racing, you know, the PRL follows the iRacing schedule, so these guys get practice in the official races. Jose told me he won a race today by gambling late and not taking tires on the second stop. I could see that coming into play here later on. By the way, um, I, give it another five laps, I think. And then you're going to see a lot of drivers, uh, all of the top seven go into the pits. Um, this whole kind of group that we're seeing on our screen, the five here and then the two that are a little bit farther back. You see them all through the corner right there. I, I, I think they'll make it to lap 50. I just so the question I the question I have about that though, and I agree with you that that's about the number I predict. The question I have for you though is: that, Are we going to see this like Daytona, Talladega style? Are they all going to come in together? Are they all going to risk coming in together and possibly having some kind of carnage for the benefit of the draft? Do they undercut, overcut each other, hoping to come back together? How do you think they pull it off? It's a good question. Um, I think they're going to try and run it to the uh, absolute max. I think all of them will. And if uh, some go in a lap earlier, everyone else will come in the next lap. You, I, I think you're in that position where you can't afford going early unless... I guess you could if you plan for it earlier. It's just... It, it's still early on, but early, it's late enough where you have to think about you know, how many more times you have to go into the pits as Jose Acosta makes a move down to the inside. That was a brash move. Yeah, that was a very brash move, wasn't it? Here's Trent Dinkle now getting that spot. So he wants now up to P2 again in between the Acosta brothers. We've seen many drivers have this predicament in PRL, but Trent is more than competent and capable to handle that. And now he's going to try to run it outside against Abner try and take the lead here. Ooh, a little bit of a wiggle you saw from Trent Dinkle oh, and almost. Oh my goodness. Oh, still getting close. There was contact. What is Dinkle and Jose Acosta doing right oh, there? There's been there's been no love loss there before. This isn't the first time they've touched bumpers. You know what? Dink I mean, listen, Trent Dinkle for all of his accolades, he's <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty uh, well known. About oh, look at that. Being in the way. Oh man, he is wanting Jose Acosta out of the way. That's all that is. I'd love to see Trent's reaction right now because <laughs> uh, there might be some if you can lip read there might need to be some blurred lines right there where's John boy those. for some lip where's reading some... action uh, in precision racing league competition I'm sure that's not gonna be the end of the end of it watch bottom right you, you see uh, look, Dinkle, look to his yeah look look. he looked he looked as well that was uh I don't know who the aggressor was there but it got bad quickly between those two. Uh, I mean, it got bad is sort of implying that it's over. It's nah, getting true. bad might be, the, <laughs> might be the correct phrase There's for it. I don't, know that, I don't know they're done yet. I think you're right there. I, I don't think they're done either. I, I think this is uh, going to get a little bit worse before it calms down. And look at Trent, like all kidding aside, look at Trent here. Look how much Trent is talking or was talking. Oh. Now, he's up now that I said something. Uh-oh, hello. Talking about cautions. Talking about how these drivers are going to react if it stays green the whole way. They got to make sure they're not the caution. So I say these are the guys who don't, who or at least want it to be the caution, and they're about to be in it if they're not careful. Dinkle way outside there, trying to put outside run, trying to clear Jose Acosta. He's, he's getting a just, little bit. He's driving mad right now. Um, yeah. He's losing a bit of concentration, racing with Jose. He's going to try and pinch him. He's going to totally try to pinch him. We're at lap 50. We're completing it right now. When when do they come into the pits? Is Maverick Davis there as well on the outside with Jose Acosta splitting the difference? Man, I don't know how he fit in there, honestly. That was tight. That was close. That was scary. That was. And they're three wide. Oh, Yikes. my goodness. If Jose hadn't backed out there, he would have wiped out oh, Maverick. Maverick, hold that it together. That. Oh, man. It's getting a little bit antsy, is it not? And then what's antsy more is, and what's antsy more is these guys are these guys are racing this better hard. place. Brian Dixon into the pits, by the way. They're, yeah, they're racing this hard, and what sort of frustrates you about how they're racing Davis. is you're thinking they've all got to be pitting soon. Like, why are you racing this hard? 
true. Maverick David is out of pits right now. So you have to imagine that Acosta, Dinkle, all of them are coming in right now. God. Is was when I assumed they'd be coming into the pits. Uh, so Maverick Davis and that Camaro ZL1 down pit road right now. Tristan Callahan as well. Devin Maines in pit road as well as Ben Laster. Kind of out of it at this point. But Davis, of course, has a shot still to win. It's just will he have any help in the draft coming out of it uh, as these drivers... Oh, yeah, they're, they're slowing it down. Up. They're coming down. Dinkle and Jose Acosta coming down together. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that team. Uh, right will there, there be will there be a little bit of contact on Pit Road at some no, point? Not pit road. No, I don't Pit Road, I don't think. But look at how they, they manage that. They, they, and not communication probably, but look how Dinkle just got to the inside, Acosta the outside, so that neither of them lost the speed of that pit road entry. That's a that's a great way to get on pit road. Yeah, it is a really solid way they got down safely. Maverick Davis up to speed down the back stretch, entering turn three with some fresh tires. That stint was 53, 52 laps long for Maverick Davis. Uh, so you're saying probably, it's, a chance. Uh, it's no, no, I'm not saying that because they they had the help with the caution, right? Like they're gonna have to really fuel save here. Um, and they're, they're kind of getting hurt by the fact that if it stays green the rest of the way, right? That was with two cautions, we have to remember. That a That's driver... True. However, the flip side is if, they, if, if they're going to feel safe... Oh, man, what was that puff of smoke there? I don't know what that was. But anyways, the, the, the beautiful part about fuel saving here, Dylan, is they know right now. They know on lap 54 of 105 they need to fuel save. As a driver, that's how you feel safe. That's how you make it work, is when you know a whole sin ahead, what you need to get out of it. The worst thing you can do as a driver or as a spotter or as a coach or a crew chief is say, hey, listen, there's six laps left. Can you save me uh, half a lap? Like, no. That was good info 60 laps ago. However, never mind, because they're side by side, so I, I don't know. James O'Brien, by the way, was the last one to come down to pit road, went 54 total laps impressive what we'll see i mean this battle is just intense and insane and they're not really fuel saving right here no, um maybe a little bit so what i'm curious to see though is all the drivers who stayed out um in this round of, of pit stops and those this lap or two um the drivers who pitted on lap 11 during the last caution they're currently on lap 45 44 of their stint it's all the drivers like brandon and harvey and mellow and christian and walden and kibby and daniels um who was back into the conversation kind of if it depends how long can they stay out because that's well, going to show us how long the drivers who just came down pit road can stay out as well and the question is what is the difference in tires right what does a Trent Dinkle, a Jose Acosta, a Maverick Davis get out of a new set of tires that Tommy Brandon, Bruno Mello, Pat Harvey isn't? In other words, what is that time gap? And can it be made up? It'll be a pretty big time gap as far as on track if by penny once or twice. That'll be big. But if you can make it up by taking a second set of tires, I don't know. I, I, I don't think you can. But crazier things have happened if you prove me wrong around here. So... Where is Abner Acosta? I can't know where is Abner Acosta. And, and that's, that that's really wonderful. Rank. That was wonderful. There's Abner Acosta. And he's way back in the field. He spent 15 seconds longer in pit road than anyone else should have spent. And that cost him. He apparently really babied that pit entry. Instead of going that limit of 55 miles per hour, he went... 30. So, I have no idea what happened to him there, but if it goes green, he's out of contention, which is huge. That's huge for the championship race. Where you got a situation like Joshua Daniels, who we just saw running in fifth, of course, due to strategy right now. Could that play a factor later on? Maverick Davis, Trent Dinkle. Dinkle, remember, tied for second. He stands right now to, uh, to gain the most out of anybody. He and Daniels, depending on strategy. By the way, Tommy Brandon just went down pit road. That tells me 
47 or so laps is the max that you can run um, without fuel saving. So that means 47 laps means he will be right, right on the line, uh, Dylan, if you do the math. So 58 plus 47, you know, you carry the numbers, you take off your shoes, you wear out <laughs> the abacus, and I think it means he'll be right there. So yeah, right now, Pat Harvey is on a 47 lap stint. Bruno Mello on a 48 lap stint. So 48 laps is the upper echelon right now. What we're seeing, I'll tell you if it updates at any point over the next few minutes. I mean, really, they're good for the most part, right? Like you don't have to worry about any of these drivers who have yet to come in um, during this Quick round of pit stops. Joshua Daniels is down pit road. He went 47 laps. Bruno Mello now on 49 laps. So, get a fair bit out of these cars. The question is, does a driver like Trent Dickman, who came in six laps ago, and there's 45 laps left, See what I'm saying? It's going to cut it really close to save a couple of laps before this race is all said and done. Mello's in. He went 49 laps on that stint. Same with Walden. Went 49 laps. Chad Kibbe went 48 laps. 49 laps, I guess, is the upper limit of what you can run before running out of fuel um, without any cautions. And listen, what these guys are, are doing, and I talk about it all the time, Dylan, there's a, a business strategy that says, here's, by the way, here's Pat Harvey and I think Luke Christian right here on camera, both coming down. In order, to be, in order to be successful in life, you have to be better than, less than, or different than your opponent. So if you do the same thing your opponent does every week, you're never going to catch them, right? So you can be better than, you can be less than, or you can be different than. Right now, they're going for different than. Listen, why not try something different? What do you have to lose? What do you have to lose by trying something? And the worst that happens is a couple of yellows come out, it levels it all off, and it was just a fun experiment. But if it does work, it'll be a fun night. So if you recall, they came in on lap 11. They went green on lap 13. So those 49, 50 lap stints, let's say 49, was really 47 green flag laps with two caution. So. I don't know. I feel like 48 is, is kind of your, your margin here um, between, you know, a full green flag run. Now, I think what would be interesting to watch as this run goes on, though, if it stays green, is watching Pat Harvey and the others and seeing how they're how are they driving? Are they racing hard? Are they drafting? Are they lifting a little bit? What are they doing? And those actions will probably tell you how confident they feel and where they are. Listen, if I if I come on that pit road and I'm Pat Harvey, for example, and I think I'm a lap short, I'm going to start lifting now. I'm going to start drafting now. I'm going to start doing whatever I can to get me that one extra lap in case I need it. So how they behave on track will probably help dictate their confidence level. So I'll tell you this. Here's what I think. I'm going to make a prediction with coming to 42 laps to go. Let's say with 42 laps to go, you can run 48 laps uh, on a full tank of fuel. Oh, there's contact, Jose Acosta, Maverick Davis again. Oh, Jose boy. Acosta making more contact with another driver. What is going on? They're side by side. Remember, this is for the race lead right now. Trent Dinkle fell off big time. Dinkle got into the wall a little bit ago, but I also think he's saving again. The three and a half seconds is a lot to save. Maverick Davis has been very aggressive. Uh, here's the thing. Coming to 41 laps to go, these drivers, if they can only go 48 laps, that means that they will have had to come down within the last seven laps to make it on a full tank of fuel. And I'll tell you what, nobody within the top seven, remember that number, we were talking seven, the top seven earlier. We're all gonna come down earlier. The top seven right now are not in good shape. The only driver that's even close, you know, to potentially making it, but would have to stretch it into like a, 
uh, a 51 50 lap stint, which is potentially possible, is James O'Brien. James O'Brien um, is only a few seconds in front of a driver like Bruno Mello, who doesn't have to save at all. So if it goes green the rest of the way, Jose Acosta, Maverick Davis, Trent Dinkle, Brian Dixon, Brandon Fetterplace, Corey Cook, Corey Cook for sure. I, I don't think they've got a shot. I, I think they've got to come down again. I think they'll run out of fuel. James O'Brien might have a shot, might run out of fuel. And then Bruno Mello, Mello would be sitting in the catbird seat right now. And the difficult part for Acosta, Davis, Dinkle, and others is when you come off pit road with about seven laps of gas in, in the tank, no new tires, a very little fuel, that car is going to behave differently. It's going to be a little bit more loose, a lot less weight in it, and it's going to behave differently for those last few laps than what it did when you pitted before. Let's take a look at a replay here. This is Trent Dinkle in the front of your screen. On tack right there, and I'm back on the wall. Wow. Wow. That was uh, a lot of contact. See, Trent Dinkle has uh, that was a replay right there, but Maverick Davis uh, still running with Jose Costa. There's Trent Dinkle. Dinkle is currently fighting with two drivers, and that's... Uh, Brian Dixon and Brandon Fetter place in front is Tristan Callahan, who's lapped down. Still side by side for the lead here. You got to think that they know they can't make it, so they're racing as hard as they can. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, it, and actually, here's another question. Do you stay, do, if you know you can't make it, do you just go, do, do you go to the pits at midway through here? I don't know what you do. Um, I think that's always a great question, right? There's, there's, of course, three different schools of thought. Some people would say right about now, your pit road, pit window is definitely open at this point. You're a little less, than, a little less than 40 laps. Some people would say, hey, come in now, put the tires on it, get the benefit of the tires, you know, put the gas in it, you're good to go. The risk in that play, though, is if a caution comes out, you're likely trapped a lap down. Sort of the same problem with splitting it halfway is that you're, you're kind of straddling the fence and there's a lot of problems there in that, you know, now do you have enough laps to benefit from the new tires? And the problem of waiting to the very last second is all the what ifs. You know, what if, um, you know, what if the yellow comes out the last second? You don't have any tires and you're not gonna pit with a couple laps to go to put tires on it to be competitive. Or what if you miss time the gas? Or, you know, what if the yellow comes out and you can't get down pit road to put gas in it? There's all those different strategies at play. At this point, though, if I were one of them, I would just wait till the end and see what happens. Um, you've made your bed, now you just got to lie in it and see where it takes you. Yeah, and I guess that's a good point, right? You got to see where it takes you um, to the end of this race. I think that's the strategy. You just kind of hope that somehow some way you can find a few extra gallons of fuel a few extra laps of fuel from thin air or maybe a uh i, I, I don't know what the move is maybe maybe you find maybe yourself caution. a well-timed caution yeah, yeah. Then maybe it's, that's what they're hoping for truth be told we're going through all these what ifs about when do i pit when do i not pit you know blah 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 blah, blah. what these guys are really praying for is someone in the back to hit a wall to spin through the grass to hit someone else to anything these guys are, are, are doing whatever they whatever the, the the nascar version of a rain dance is to get the admin to put a put the yellow flag out well i don't know if iRacing has any hopes to include rain in oval racing or the threat of rain i think it's a perpetual vortex theory going on oh, in iRacing no, no, on the no, oval I'll, i will i will quit my broadcast don't do that well, I, I, if Trent finishes on the podium, you might owe me some boneless wings from... <laughs> That's fine, but this whole vortex theory about rain isn't, you know, we're not <laughs> not letting this conspiracy theory, an aluminum foil hat BS fly up here. This doesn't happen. Un understood. I understand your trepidation. <laughs> trepidation from uh right, was i not clear that. in how i felt about that Do we no you were very clear okay. you are very clear about it for sure i understand dumbest theory ever <laughs> oh man okay so 
for Maverick Davis to win this race, he has got to go uh, on a skit that is 54 laps long on one tank of fuel. The most we've seen on a green flag run with two laps of caution lap, caution periods, um, was 48, 49, 50, 49, right. 50. So, and listen, I don't know. And, and listen here, first. There's no sense of lifting there. Not at all. There's no hint of, like, getting off the throttle and saving gas. There's no hint of, hey, like, these guys must know they're not going to make it. Like, they've already accepted that reality. Trent Dinkle's pity, by the way. Trent Dinkle's going to go with wow. the strategy. All right, I don't hate the move. He knows he can't make it. Dinkle, who is on lap 20 of his stint, the same exact stint length as Jose Acosta right now, knows he can't make it. That means neither can Davis or Fenner Place or Dixon, James O'Brien, maybe, but I don't know. This, this is an interesting strategy now. Yeah, we see Trent Dinkle down in the bottom right-hand box of the screen here coming through pit road and getting that done. I like the strategy because now he can afford to put the tires on and see if he can benefit from it. Uh, and once again, he knew he wasn't going to make it, so you got to make something of your situation. And sometimes you can't wait for fate to happen. You have to be the man who chooses More contact with Jose Acosta and Maverick Davis. Man, oh man. Makes no sense, except I well, think Jose Costa is hiring for a spotter. <laughs> <laughs> I, think Maverick, is oh. I think Maverick Davis is uh, not somebody you necessarily want to uh, upset. Neither Trent Dinkle, but Jose Acosta does not seem to care. Now, look at this. Look who is a lap down. Now, this is important because if caution came out right now, Trent Dinkle would be trapped a lap down. No. Take the wave he'd be, around. He'd be if, the lucky dog. Oh, that's true. He would be the lucky dog. You're absolutely correct there. Um, oh, man, look at that difference right there. Sorry to cut yeah. you off. Look no, at that you're difference good. right there. Yeah, that is He's a massive speed tight. difference. He will. Absolutely will. But this is only with 20 laps, fresher tires. Why so, up Jose right here. You know he says hello? These guys do hate each other. These guys aren't the happiest with each other. <laughs> Trent got as Trent far down. Of room. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other thing is you got to remember, um, even if you got the lucky dog, right, he would still be uh, starting at the rear of the field. Right. So it would help, but it would also not help. Um, you'd have to make a lot of moves very quickly and burn up that rubber. I mean... So now if you're Trent, you want the yellow to come out, by the way, because now no, the yellow comes no. out. Well, why not? Yes, I lied. Yes, only if... Only if uh, a driver like Bruno Mello or more specifically Pat Harvey and Luke Christian can't make it, I think they can make it. Um, but, if you're Trent, but if you're Trent and the yellow comes out, you've already pitted. You don't need to pit again. You're but everybody else will come. Right. Everybody you're going to inherit the lead. Right, but everyone else will come with fresh tires. Uh, three or four laps. Isn't like, and these happen right now. Right. Long. Yeah, no, no, yeah. you're 100% right there. Um, it has to happen right now for Dinkle to get the benefit of the caution. Uh, any longer, I I don't think we'll see any benefit. Um, so, to me, I mean that that pretty much says to me right now that uh, Dink. Let me do math right now. 16 laps that Pat Harvey's been out on on his stint. Right, he's running in third place right uh -huh. now. I can't speak. Samith Lou Christian. Um, Bruno Meller went one lap longer. So if we go by Harvey and Christian, who are now Crane on lap... San Francisco. Who are on lap... Uh, what are we talking? What? <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, on 17 laps of tires, there are 26 laps to go, 27 to go in this race. 27, 44, they can make it. This is Pat Harvey's race to lose, or Lou Christian's race to lose right now. Well, I'll tell you what, 
what? Yeah, Tristan County has called out he's going to be pitting here, so there's one of them coming down pit road. But what I'm, what I'm intrigued by, I get the idea of the math you're doing about it's Pat Harvey's um, race to lose. Of course, there's so many factors that still come into play. The difference for me now would be, you know, the, the time difference between them and Dinkle. I want to look at that in a second and see if I think it's possible Dinkle catches them. Um, I don't know. Well, I... That's the real question, right? Is Dinkle with 20 lap fresher tires going to be the uh, the difference here? Um, the other thing we also have to think about is Dinkle has 20 lap fresher tires than the other guys on his strategy, um, but he doesn't have 20 lap fresher tires uh, than drivers like Pat Harvey or, or Luke Christian, only 12 lap fresher tires. So he's not going to catch them as quickly as he's going to catch somebody like Jose Acosta or Maverick Davis. Sure. Um, I mean, at this point, I feel like Acosta and Davis have, you know, made their bed, so to speak. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, they're they're praying for caution. That's their only hope at this point. And what's more impressive about this, by the way, is that Harvey, uh, Christian, Bruno Mello, James O'Brien, well, I said that, and I started to move here, for the most part, have been single file. They've been out here riding and, and letting it go. The best news for Trent Dinkle will be if or when these guys get too wide and three wide racing and then Dinkle can close that gap a little bit more. But right now, these guys are doing their best job at sort of getting out here and, and then race it later. Yeah, they're, they're doing their best. Um, kind of worry about everything after the fact. So we'll see if that actually kind of comes to fruition here. Um, if they, you know, if, if they get the chance um, to see the white flag, uh, I mean, they're going to try and go for it. It's, it's the situation, though, now where Davis has to make 23 laps, 24 laps more. Um, and it's getting closer to just not being a reality whatsoever. Because that brings him to, to, to 53 laps. We haven't seen anybody go that far. That's 10 extra miles that we think um, you can go. So I think he, at this point, he, he's just hoping for a caution. There's no way you can stay out the rest of the way. No, I 100% I agree with that. So right now, this battle you're watching on screen is likely the eventual battle for the lead. Right now, as you said, Acosta and Davis are technically up there. But this battle right here with, with Pat Harvey and the group is likely going to be who inherits the lead when, um, when all is said and done. So Pat Harvey and Luke Christian in third and fourth, what we believe... It is the battle for the lead right now. We're currently watching uh, Tristan Callahan um, in the back, but there's Harvey. There's Luke Christian, I believe. Yes. The the turquoise, the aqua sea, the aqua foam, the sea foam, blue, green, whatever, on front, as well as Luke Christian. And Bruno Mello is right there as well. I we believe Mello can make it. Um, as well. So this to me, and James O'Brien is going to be tight. He's really saving at this point. He's not going to be able to fight with these guys. It's it's Mello, Christian, or Harvey. I'm telling you, those three are the drivers that are going to one of those those drivers is going to win this race. Yeah, short of something this Daniels chaotic the happening that we can't foresee. And there's Daniels down pit risk either on the left side or on that ticker box. I agree with you 100%. It's it, it's down to these three unless something weird happens here. So now I start to look at the line that Pat Harvey is driving. Pat Harvey is you know, a very veteran PRL Cup driver. He's been around here for a couple of seasons at least and knows what he's doing. But right now he is letting Luke Christian get up there and race. That's not Luke Christian. Either. I'm sorry. That's a lap car up there. <laughs> I, I got excited. I was like, wait, let's up by, but now I know why. That's Ooh. that Maverick Davis ahead of me, maybe. Well, um, a little update on Trent Dinkle. He's now running right behind his teammate, Abner Acosta, but they're outside the top 10. So we'll see if Trent's able to gain any more positions. This battle for fifth, uh, it's, it's kind of like the, the best of, you know, who's left, right? Um, I still think Harvey and Christian 
um, have played this perfectly, but Christian and Harvey are going at it right now. Track conditions have, uh, it's gotten a little bit hotter, four degrees hotter than what it was Fahrenheit earlier in the race. Um, so it leads to slicker tires. The rubber comes off, it melts off a little bit more quickly. Could that maybe potentially lead to slower lap times for a lot of these drivers as this race goes on? Oh, and anything could lead to a slower, a slower lap time. It, 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 whether it be something on track or something in your head or the excitement, the nerves, what have you. The good news for Pat Harvey is that even though these are cars ahead of him that are not on their lap, that are getting, you know, lapped by him or, or trying to unlap themselves out of the case, is that these guys are going to provide that smidge in a draft that Harvey might need to stay uh, you know, up in front of this pack. Harvey's trying to do all that he can. Christian has fallen off quite a bit from Pat Harvey. I mean, it, three tenths is, is quite a bit, right? That, that feels like a long amount of time at this point. I'll play devil's advocate here. And, and I don't know, is he falling off or is he backing it up for him? That's a good question. Is he backing it up to suck in that draft of the cars behind him so they all can make the move of Pat Harvey that Harvey can't block? Or is he really falling back? Both are, both are possibilities. Both are definitely possibilities here as we see this, this race head into its final moments. Only 16 and a half, less than that, laps to go here. And stint lengths for Jose Acosta and Maverick Davis. Now they're at 37, 38. Acosta at 37. Davis at 38. And with 16 to go, that's again, that's 53 and 54 laps. They're not making it. I know I've said it so many times, but I keep trying to like go back over my math and try to figure it out. To check see it. If they, yeah, it yeah. Sense. Yeah, I agree with you, but I don't see it. I don't see it either. Um, Corey Cook down pit road and I wonder if there was a problem um, for Cook uh, for speeding Corey Cook had to serve so longer amount of time spent um, in the pits for Cook it's a bad day gone worse for Corey James O'Brien is the only driver from that like initial cycle that could potentially stay out the rest of the way and that's that's why he's part of this battle but he's not trying to make huge moves at the, this moment his stint is 36 laps long, 15 laps. That's 51 laps. That's that's asking a lot, but I don't know if it's outside the realm of possibility. That that's that's past. That's the limit. That that might be more than the limit, but I think that's the theoretical maximum. It, 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 if it is the limit, he's doing the right thing by tucking in that draft and staying right behind the car and, and sucking some extra fuel mileage out of it. You're right, it's going to be close, but he's doing the right thing here by drafting and getting into it and seeing if he can make it happen. But right now, I mean, this seems like this seems like Pat Harvey's race. Uh, it, it just, as time is ticking here, about 12, 13 laps to go as of this point, time is just ticking, ticking, ticking away. For everyone except for Pat Harvey, he pushes him to tick a little faster. Well, with there he is. Harvey focused as can be. I mean, you think he knows? He knows his strategy, right? Like, he knows that he has got such a solid chance of winning this race. Right? <laughs> He's got to be Oh, thinking. yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure he knows. He at least knows where he is. Maybe he doesn't know. Sometimes as a driver, you get locked into your own race, and you kind of forget the details of the drivers around you, who has pitted, who hasn't pitted, you know, um, he definitely knows, though, where he is stands. Now, if he knows where everyone else stands around him, that may be different. Always the driver you can do is really worry about yourself. And this is a sport unlike any other, where it doesn't matter what the other person does. It doesn't matter the strategy they call. You just have to run your race and see what happens. This isn't a team sport. It, it doesn't matter what the other guy does. At the end of the day, it just matters how well you do it. A little bit. I mean, a little bit, yeah. A little bit. At, the, at the end of the day, at this point in the race, all race you can think about as a driver, all you can think about as a driver is just run your race and see what happens. You know, you can't... This, this is almost driver versus the track as of this point, just to make sure he can keep the lap times versus driver versus driver. Well, it's kind of uncomfortable, right? Because Luke Christian is... is so, look at this. 
the push from the 33 to the 21 is not a, hey, come on, Lou, uh, catch up the pack thing. It's a James O'Brien, I want to stay in the draft as much as possible and go fast without using fuel as much as possible um, thing, right? Like, it's, it's not James O'Brien trying to help out Lou Christian. It's, it's helping him out, which coincidentally is helping him. Uh, Christian out, catch Pat Harvey, Harvey and Christian. This could be the theoretical battle for the win here. And now Bruno Mello has entered back into the conversation. Mello, remember, um, he has one lap longer on this stint, but it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, they're all going to make it to the end. It's the 67, the 21, and the 78, I think, who have the best chance of winning. And I, I want to keep trying to include James O'Brien in it. And he's getting closer to, you know, being there in the conversation. But it's still a 51-lap stint to the end that he's got to make. So this four-car battle, I think, is the fight to the end. But James O'Brien is going to have to really hope that, again, he, he can make it to the end and maybe one last little bit of an effort here. Yeah, so right now, this is that that moment that, like I said, some of us live for right now. You know, that, 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 that it's done. You know, all the decisions have been made. Your cards are on the table. Whatever, uh, you know, analogy you want to use, you know, the, the chapters have been written. You know, the, the, the songs have been sung. Whatever you have in your head right now that I can't think of. I got a lot of songs in my head. <laughs> uh, we are where we are is, is the right way to say it. You know, it is what it is. And so right now, everyone's just going to drive it through. The biggest mystery, like you keep putting out, is James O'Brien. He At first, I thought he wasn't going to make it. But all that drafting, I think maybe he has a shot. But here's Jose Acosta, your leader for now. No indication on the radio that he's going to pit. I think he's going to run it dry. He's literally going to run this until the last second. And he is praying. for a It's a good thing he doesn't have, like, a virtual water bottle or, like, you know, anything to put out there. And I guarantee you he would be. I can't believe you you brought up the water bottle controversy from NASCAR in years past. I mean, I'm just saying <laughs> it's happened, right? Like it, it certainly happens. I believe that was what Robbie Gordon. Oh, there's been more than one. There's That's been not, more than one. Name name. Nah, I name names. It's look, look at this here. James O'Brien moved up. With or a different moving okay. spot here, but still trying to keep in that line. That's his interest right now. You saw it's him so trying difficult. To kinda, it is, especially for the corners here. It, I'm sure he's starting to see something a little bit better. Maverick Davis, pit road. He can't make it. He knew it. He was in a worst not sure. case scenario. He's going to come up a few laps short, and that's going to hurt him. So a guy like Trent Dinkle is going to gain all these spots from drivers who have went the entire rest of the way but couldn't make it. That's the really interesting thing here, is that Trent Dinkle, of everyone in that pit cycle, maybe except for James O'Brien, is going to pass everybody. Because he came in midway through, and everybody else on that pit cycle is going to lose positions if they can't make it to the end of this race. Jose Acosta, pit road. Oh, smoke down there, too. I think it was a lockup. But yeah, Jose Acosta could not make it. That is it, and look at that, that was a 47 oh. lap stint. Hey, real quick, Jose Acosta, black, black, speeding pit road. Oh! The range of port. He was three at the line, the pit road was the smoke. Five. That was the smoke, it was a lockup. Jose Acosta, bad to worse. He just said when it rains it pours, all, and, and all the sayings from Derek Watson and Dylan Coyle. But with just five and a half, five laps and some change remaining in this one, Harvey, O'Brien, Mello, Christian. Four cars under a blanket to decide the winner at Auto Club. And James O'Brien not in line anymore. He can smell it. He knows he can win this race. But does he have enough fuel? That's the big question mark here. I I, I don't know. We're going to find out in a moment, though. But O'Brien needs to really now. Oh, man. He is done saving. I think he is ready to... Rip it on through and see what happens now. Harvey right now has that car in front of him that's going to help a little bit with the draft here as long as they don't get in the way. Remember, by the way, Dylan, no overtime 
in the ERL. This is maybe the first time I thought to bring it up in a while because there's so many what if scenarios about fuel here. We're at that point of no return. And I'm not seeking that for you. Well, song by Kansas, by the way. <laughs> Bring you I'm, young kids in the crowd. Kansas is not just a state. Yeah, because you're because you're an old man. <laughs> I, hey, I, I, hey, I got a vinyl. I got a record player today. We'll talk about that afterwards, but you might know a thing or two. <laughs> Lap 102 of 105. Three and a half laps to go. That one car in the outside line, left guard, James O'Brien, trying to make some moves around the outside. Man, look at Harvey. Right now, it's Pat Harvey. A little smoke right there. What was that? I think was it was just contact? getting into the wall. No, no, no. I think it was just getting into the wall of the left car. Had to get out of the way as quickly as he could. James O'Brien going for the lead around the outside of Pat Harvey. Harvey wants to keep it. One win in his PRL history for Harvey, who slides up, got really tight. That's gonna allow James O'Brien 18 wins. He's got the fifth most all time in PRL Cup Series history. And he's trying to go yeah. for a 19th year. If I was Pat Harvey right now, I don't know if I want to fight him. Listen, let him go lead a couple laps. Let him ruin that fuel strategy. Yeah, Maybe but he hasn't saved enough. I mean, obviously- Look right there, Luke Christian and Bruno Mello. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, Bruno Mello has just gone around. Pat Harvey and Lou Christian with two laps to go here. O'Brien leads. Does he have the fuel to make it? If not, Mello is right there. He has never won in Precision Racing League action before. He's going for his career first, and he's got a big run down the back stretch, Derek. Here he goes. It's going to get just under him. And now O'Brien way up to the top. This put Bruno Mello at the bottom. Bruno now feeling that stress of that not having won. Need to slide it all the way up the track, cut off our race. Can't do contender. it, he hesitated. He hesitated too much. White flag coming to the line, two miles. Contact, like Mello and O'Brien. White flag Look, in the air. Who's gonna Mello win this one? Down. Oh man, this is close. Mello was looking all around, waiting to see where he was clear, where he wasn't. Then that's what caused that contact. Mello has one more Look shot here. here. Great it is on run. The outside. Great run on the outside. He's got all the momentum out of turn two. O'Brien, I don't know if he has enough fuel to make it to the checkered flag, but they're dead even. O'Brien fighting back on the inside in the turn three. A big slide into and the Mello. corner. Mello's going to try and reach back on the outside. He's trying to handle that car up oh, into no. the wall. Contact with O'Brien. It's a photo finish to the line. Who gets there first? Bruno Mello. Mello wins his first Precision Racing League race ever. <laughs> the excitement, the jubilation by 67 thousandths. Take a sigh. Breathe easy, oh. Breathe <laughs> easy, buddy. You did it. Breathe easy. Unbelievable race. So many questions answered in the last couple of laps who could and couldn't, did and didn't. And at the end, the one man who did, Bruno Mello, Almost seemingly out of nowhere, but picked his time and his spot and won this race, Dylan. I mean, if you want an iRacing top 10 submission, I think you found one of those. Bruno Mello, he's going to burn it down, and he has all the right to do so. It's his first in PRL career for the 78 machine, and I mean, that was a perfect race. Mello was the one I, I didn't know had the, had the speed in him. I thought it was Harvey and Christian, but it turns out Mello waited for the right time to, to pounce and got it done. Got Let's it done indeed. What a great run. Take a look at the results here. Bruno Mello, of course, wins by 67 thousandths over James O'Brien. This is going to twist the championship standings up just a little bit. Pat Harvey in third with Luke Christian in fourth and Waddle Walden getting a top five finish. Trent Dinkle getting sixth place. I told you that was the right move. I think he knew early he wasn't going to make it. So he, he got the best result he possibly could have gotten. And it, it's going to help in the championship battle. Chad Kibbe in seventh. Tommy Brandon in eighth. Brandon Fetter placed Brian Dixon round out the top 10. 11th is Maverick Davis. He was the last one to finish on the lead lap. Tristan Callahan, Joshua Daniels, Abner Acosta. How about that? Daniels and Acosta 
uh, Acosta, who was up 23 points heading into this race, and Daniels, who was tied with Trent Dinkle. I mean, this is a huge swing right here, even with Dinkle not even being in the top five. Vincente Sepulveda is in 15th with Ben Laughter. Jose Acosta in 17th, all one lap down. Corey Cook, two down. Devin Maines, Eric Oliva, and 21st, Jose Medina, Luis Rodriguez, Jeff Chandler, and Chris Hudson. Round out your 24 car field of drivers. 39.753, Waldo Walden with the fastest lap on lap seven. Goodness me, what a great race and great bit of action here. And James O'Brien, we're going to pull him in first to the booth. And uh, Derek, you got to be with James. James, wow. What a great run to the end. Like, uh, first off, I have to ask the question Dylan and I were wondering for about what felt like half a race. How much gas was left in that car? Uh, point two laps. <laughs> At the line? <laughs> At the line, yeah. Okay, yeah. So we kn I figured you were drafting and saving. At, at what point did you know that was your reality, or did it just sort of happen? Or um, was there so, a point where you thought you couldn't do it? Uh, there was no point where I didn't think I could do it. It was either it happened or it didn't. Okay. Um, I think when it happened was when Abner and Trent, Trent or Abner ran out of gas. And at that point, we kind of realized, okay, we're going to be short a few laps. I had been behind them the whole first run, so I managed to draft, and I had two extra laps of fuel. So I figured, okay, I already got two laps on everybody. Let me... I started saving right out of the pits. Like, when I came out of pit road, I was in fourth gear on the apron. And I just kept that as, like, my target for the rest of the race. But, yeah, I always just kind of kept it in my head that either I make it or I just run out of gas. Um... Once Pat Harvey and the lead pack caught me, um, I just wanted to stay with them, and I stopped clutching, and uh, I noticed that their cars weren't really handling well, and I was kind of not going very fast, so I knew I had something, but uh, I just kind of didn't block Bruno the best. I, I should have went up a little higher. That's my fault, though, but he deserves it. He uh, raced hard there. So that was my next question was going to be, if you replay the last couple of laps in your head, get around Pat Harvey. With a couple laps to go, only for Bruno to get around you. Playing it back in your head a hundred times. Yeah. Um, do you think you made the move too soon? No. I think that I just didn't defend well. I knew coming to the white flag, I'm like, okay, I just need to run the top. He's running the top, and it'll take his line away. And then I can just drive into three and four on his outside and do what I just did the lap before. But I didn't go in high enough because my car had built really tight from fuel saving and just kind of cruising and so i didn't have the confidence that if i ran to the wall that it would turn in so i kind of left that lane open and he took the space and that was that was that that was that indeed well listen next week we go to iowa no nope. how confident are you <laughs> you said no already is that what you said uh, like uh, i don't i've not really ever run that track okay. um so I don't really have much of a sample size for that. So right. <laughs> this well, track was, uh, I just got back from Rolex 24 watching our team owner run. So I'm exhausted. So I'm just happy that I got second. So Awesome. Well, I hope you had fun on the trip. And I guess we'll we'll see if you can uh, repeat this next week at a track you don't know that well. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate right. it. Good night, James. Good night. All right. That's James O'Brien. He finished second tonight, Dill. Absolutely. And we'll... Well, Pat Harvey up for an interview. It doesn't look like Bruno Mello is going to be joining us, but nonetheless, Pat, I mean, that was that was an unbelievable race to the end. It, it just felt like there was a bit of a fall off there in the last couple of laps. Was it a case of, you know, maybe you were, you were out in front a little bit too much, burning up the tires, or was it a case of just Bruno saved until it was the right moment? Um, Yeah, that's disappointing. I, honestly, we thought... I don't know how James made it. We were convinced the whole time that James had to pit. And if he would have had to pit, then we thought we could like shake Bruno because we were, uh, we thought we were just pulling him along and, but then James never pitted. And so, um, I think we did go around Bruno too early in that last run. I think if we would have held like held back a little bit, maybe, uh, we could have did what he did, but, um, I don't know. Third is good, but yeah, I, I, I think uh, we probably could have done it better, but it, third uh, it feels good. 
Yeah, I feel like, you know, it, it, it's one of those situations where you got to plan for the green flag to stay out the entire rest of the time. And uh, it's a smart move uh, to come in on lap 11 under caution. You feel like, you know, there was a chance that it, it could have really turned out the way it did? Or did you feel like, ah, we might as well take fuel and let's see what happens? Well, we were doing some crazy math. And I don't know if anyone, if any of it was right, but we had convinced ourselves that if we topped off, we could like save fuel and make it work. And so we were committed at that point and it worked, it really worked out. Uh, but like I said, I don't know, I don't know how James made it. Um, maybe we weren't as close as we thought we were on fuel, but, um, we were pumped that we had an alternate strategy and it was working out. Uh, that was, it's, it's really fun to be on that end of the those kind of strategy races. Well, if it makes you feel any better, James said he had 0.2 laps left of fuel at the line. So it, it was it was right there. I knew it. I could feel it. It's, when there was like four to go, we, we've kind of decided we were sunk after that. Uh, and I, I don't know. I probably could have done some better things on like the last lap or whatever, made some better decisions on what line to take. But I don't know. It... it the best i could do it was it was fun it was a fun race well pat it was fun seeing that strategy uh play out and uh work out almost to perfection for you uh congratulations though on the podium finish and uh again thank you for the goggles uh on in the post-race interview thanks for having me and uh i haven't been wearing them during the races because i guess i'm superstitious and i forgot to wear them the first race and i did okay but um I haven't forgot about them, so they're they're still here to stay. Very good, oh. very, good. very good. Safety first. Uh, That's right. Congrats, Pat. Looking forward Thank to you. seeing what you do in the next uh, set of five races. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Pat Harvey finishing third in today's race. And so we said we didn't have Bruno, <laughs> but we do have Trent Dinkle. And, and Trent, we have one question for you, just one. And it's <laughs> going to be Derek who asks you this question. It's a very important question. So, so Trent, well, I need to let you know that uh, there, there's 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 chicken wings on the line for how you answer this question. So think <laughs> think about this, right? All right. Not for you, for me. Oh, okay. Well, maybe. Yeah, not for you. Yeah. Um, early in the race, we found you sitting back in like sixth, seventh position towards uh, that being before the first yellow. One of us thinks that you were strategizing and saving tires sitting back in seventh place. And one of us thinks that Trink Dinkle always wants to lead the race and was unhappy he was in seventh place. Mm -mm. No, I ran a couple officials all week. And I mean, I finished second in the 6400 SOF and I didn't lead a single lap. I did not want to be out in front trying to like manage people and not burn off the tires. I was perfectly happy sitting where I was. I mean, Thank I you. would have been, yeah, I would have been happier being further back, to be honest, because I did not like, there was no point to be out front because you had, I mean, I don't know who, two of the cars, I mean, they blew my doors off on that lap, like the final yellow flag restart, and then within like 10 laps, we blew their doors off, so it's like, well, there's no real point to stay out here, so, and then, you owe, you owe, you owe me yeah. 12 bucks. <laughs> That's really all is this. You owe me 12 bucks. No, I'm going to ask yeah. you one more bonus question and then we'll let you go for the night. Um, there's some contact tonight between you and Jose. And we were watching your webcam. And you weren't, you didn't look exactly thrilled. Uh, what was going on there? I mean, I think it was net code, but I mean, yeah, I'll be nice because it's Abner's brother. But yeah, <laughs> I just, you know racing hard i i think i saw abner duck because i know abner was trying to help his brother instead of helping me which is fine but and then i ducked and i saw him there and i saw he moved down further so i was like well i'm just gonna get behind abner and take his draft away and then he moved back up and it was just a little bit of net code but yeah i think at the end of the day i feel like i won that battle finishing a hell of a lot better <laughs> Fair enough. All right. That's well, wild. that's Trent Dinkle, Derek's new least favorite URL driver. Thank you, Trent. And, and, and still my favorite now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. All right, Trent. Well, we'll see you next week at Iowa. All right. Sounds good. That was me 12 bucks. <laughs> that man better have cash. Yeah. Auto Club was fun. 
and I won some chicken wings from that. But Bruno Mello won it. And we go to Iowa Speedway next Sunday, February 4th, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Same day of the week, same time as the race start. It's going to be fun. I will, unfortunately, not be in the booth with you, Derek. But you were in the booth with me today. And again, I'm so happy you were because I am getting chicken wings from <sighs> you and myself, Dylan Coyle, producer Mike, Nick Hunter in the Race Control Center. From everyone at Race Spot TV, this has been PRL Cup Series Action. Bruno Mello wins his first PRL race, and it was a good one. From all of us, so long, good night, and good racing. <laughs>